All right, sounds good. Well, thanks for having me. I am. Uh, my name is Jeff Milliken with Texas Farm Credit. I am on our. Um, we have two sides of our company, really. We have a, a farm and ranch side, and then we have our consumer purpose side, which is which is my team. And we do the smaller acreage uh, stuff with primary homes or second homes, and uh, we have the ability to go, you know, longer term. We do a lot of thirty-year fixed and um, and longer term stuff that doesn't really fit into the farm, the farm and ranch side, right? So kind of it's kind of that bridge between the conventional lending and the farm and ranch lending. So you know, these ten to twenty-acre lots that you have listed are perfect for us because uh, we can do the lot loan with fifteen percent down. And then our construction loan, we're basically not limited on dollar amount. Uh, we don't really have a jumbo loan. So that, you know, 724 that runs into the conventional loans isn't really an issue for us on our construction or home purchase loans. But um, our lot loans are really cool. That's, that's what we really talked about most. And that's, um, you know, land, no minimum size, you know, up to, you know, we've, we're, we've done 250 acres before, right? We just really have a maximum loan size of a million dollars on my side, right? If it's more than that, then it would go over to the farm and ranch side, which is more of a commercial type loan, but still a longer term fix. The rates are a little higher, um, but they still have a lot of the same um, attributes that we have on that lot loan. So on mine, it's 15% down on a 15 year or out to a 25 year fixed rate with 25% down, right? So the way these are calculated, generally the down payment matches the, the term um, with 15% being the minimum down. Um, we have some shorter term loan options, but the uh, rates just aren't aren't competitive on those right now. You know, for some reason, adjustable rates are are higher than fixed rates right now. So so we're sticking with those. And is that um, on have a, just, is that on just land or is that land home packages? So that's just the land, right? Okay. So the home package is a little little better terms than the um than the land. But you know, on that land loan, I'll, I'll wrap up those real quick. On the land loan, you can roll in improvements. So if people want to buy you know, that 10 acres and go ahead and do some clearing, put a road in, dig a pond, you know, build a barn, whatever they want to do. We were very, very flexible on what we allow um, as improvements on land. And we'll roll that into the loan. You know, so we'll add that to the appraised value. We'll get those quotes, get the bids from the, the subcontractors and add that to the appraised value and then lend up to 85% of that. Right. So it's a really great way for them to, you know, Maybe they don't find their dream piece of property right off the bat, but you know if they really want a place with a tank on it, right? And they can't find one, we can we can roll that into the pond and they can put it wherever they want. So it's it's really great. We're really trying to sell that improved, you know, imp improved lot, right? Versus a, you know, I think it, it it opens up a little different different um category. I don't I don't really see it marketed very much, and it's a really neat neat deal. Um, we can also roll it all into one. We do a one time closed construction loan where they can buy the lot, the land build a house, do any improvements they want to, you know, and on that type of loan. So loan with a house on it, we're looking at 15% down on a 30 year fixed. Um, and rates are very similar to conventional rates. I think we're at 7.375 right now. Uh, one thing we do allow is we allow a rate conversion every 12 months. So if the rates are lower, a quarter or more lower, 12 months after 12 payments, after every 12 payments for the life of loan, you can lower the rate to the market rate for $500, right? So sure. no refinance needed, just, That's cool. yeah, it's a really great, especially with this rate environment we're in right now, right? It really, uh, really does a lot and, yeah. and um, no jumbo limit on that either. So we're doing a lot of um, first and second home constructions on bigger, bigger properties because there's not a lot of jumbo construction loans out there that are 30 year fixed, you know, one time closed. Um, and that, you know, it's got the same stuff. We can roll in anything. We're very flexible on builders. We do need a general contractor. Um, but we're really flexible on it. And um, it's a great, it's a great loan as well. And that's same with same loan as home purchase. Basically they're all the same loan really. It's just the different, different purposes, um, loan purchase or refi or rehab, you know, we can roll in that money to rehab an old house on a purchase. Um, not really investment homes. You know, we do primary and second homes, second homes have to be on 10 or more acres. So um but those are our, our, our loans that we really, we would do most of. We have some options, different options. We can do manufactured homes if they haven't been moved, you know, on acreage. Um, we don't do a whole lot of those. And do mobile homes. Nice. Not construction, right. But if it's a mobile home on, it's with a rural mobile home, we have a really great outlet for it. If it, if it hasn't been moved, right. That's a kicker on a lot of these rural mobile homes is they've been moved before. That, that I, I used to out. actually make money moving them. 
So back in the days, not to get off topic, but um, we used to, you know, buy a little piece of dirt and then you just go buy like a foreclosed mobile home from somewhere, move it to the piece of dirt, put an FHA engineered foundation on it, surrender the title. So now it becomes real property. And then you could like triple your money. I mean, it was insane. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, as of a couple of years ago, we didn't we didn't care if it had been moved or not on the conventional side, right? I don't understand. Like, who cares if it's been moved? Like, why is that such a big deal? It, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But I, uh, we see some you know pretty nice ones that have been moved before, and it just kicks them out. So it's kind of a it's kind of tough to tough to tell sometimes if they've been moved or not. But we don't really have an acreage minimum on those either, right? So we do need the home to have a little value. Um, but it is, uh, we don't really have an acreage limitation on that either. So sure. seen some nice, nice ones on some bigger acreage that we can, we can do that. Well, yeah. I mean, once you start getting into, you know, 50, hundred acre tracks, you actually start seeing a lot of mobile homes because I mean, land's so expensive, you know, you do a 50 acre track at, you know, 10, you know, 15, 20,000 an acre, which some of these places have gotten just insane. You know, you almost can't even afford to build a house after you buy the land. So a lot of people are, you know, putting mobile homes on them. Yeah, we have people that will buy the land, put a mobile home, and then build in a few years, right? Um, okay. We have people that build little barn does, you know, in the meantime, and you can wrap that into the purchase as well. Um, you know, if it's less than 50% living, the barn doe, let's say, then it would be a barn loan. If it's 50% or more, it's a home loan, right? So that's the terms are much better. We've had people just literally go just 51% so they can get a, a 30 year fixed loan and the rates are better on those loans as well. Um, oh, one no, thing I forgot to mention on yeah, uh, what's that? No, keep going. Oh, on those, uh, on those lot loans as well. Like, so let's say that, that 10 acre lot out there. Um, if the loan amount is 250,000 or less, we don't get documentation from the borrower. Right. So it's a no doc. Um, 15 year fixed, 15% down loans, pretty, pretty great deal, right? That makes the process go real fast. We still order appraisal, still get titled. Um, we're real flexible on surveys, you know, plats. If, you, if it's a plat for, you know, if someone has to plat it for a, you know, subdivision split. Um, if it is a development that doesn't have county road access, we do need the roads to be in somewhat pa passable condition and, and uh, electricity to be started. Yeah, so based on what you're saying, is that the 250 that you're saying, is that including what is going to be added to the property, or is that just based on like under the 250 for just the lot itself? Yeah, so the 250, the non ATR, two, we call it non ATR, which is the ability to repay, right? That's the whole ball of worms that the loans are based off of. It's just raw land, right? So if you start rolling in, it's basically a loan. It can't have any conditions, right? So when we're doing those and rolling in improvements, um, it has to go back to the underwriter once we go to the quotes. It's a little more complicated once we get the appraisal back. So it's only for raw land with no with, that we're not rolling in improvements. It just can't have a, a residence you, on it. How do you get away with, so I own or finance a lot. I mean, I've been owner financing for 20 years, probably done a thousand properties or more. How are you getting around a no ABR ability to repay a, a no doc loan? I mean, because I have to follow the same guidelines because I do so many as as if I was a mortgage. So I've got to be Dodd Frank compliant. You know, I've got to get all the truth and lending docs. You know, they have to be approved. The debt to income has to be this, has to be that. I've got to have a full file on them. How are y'all able to? How are y'all getting around the ability to repay Dodd Frank stuff? That's a good question. Wow. I even if it's land, it's still a residential. Because that was my right. argument. It's just land, like you know, why do I have to follow Dodd Frank stuff if it's just land? And they're like, doesn't matter. It's residential. You have to follow it. Yeah, that's a that's a very good question. You know, because we do these are all falling on the consumer purpose side because they're considered residential. You know, we're still putting out a, a loan estimate and a closing disclosure. I don't know. I haven't really asked honestly. Um, you know, <laughs> just uh. They told me I could do it. And I was like, well, let's roll. So I don't, uh, yeah. I, 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 do mean, not I would know love the rules to, on that. to be able to do that. Cause I hate doing all the Dodd Frank crap for just raw land. Like I, I'd like to go back to the good old days where it's like, you know, show me some check stubs. Let's sign a contract and close next week. You know? 
Yeah, yeah, they and they literally just moved it up. It was two hundred before a couple of months ago. They moved it up to two fifty. So I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I may yeah. ask. That's, that'd be interesting to hear that. But that's a. Uh, I like it. I don't want to, you know, have them not do it anymore. But uh, it's. Uh, I'm not sure how they do that, honestly, because that that does that is interesting. That I know if you what service over five a year or something like that, you have to follow all those. It's a pretty small number. I think it's three, yeah. unless they've changed. Three. It. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, I. You know, um, if yeah, if if you find that out, because I would love to, you know, cause to get rid of the whole Dodd Frank stuff on these land deals. Now, the houses, I get it. But man, to get rid of it on the land and just make it bam, bam, we're done, let's go, make my life easier, right, Susie? Make Susie's life easier. You know, we don't do it on the farm and ranch side. Farm and ranch side still uses a like a HUD. They they um they don't even mess with any of that stuff. It's really wild. So they they do down ten acres and and up. You know, mm. they don't do it much anymore just because their rates are brutal. But um you know, on our, on, on their side, they don't. So I don't know, uh, I don't know how they're getting away with it. And that's even on lots, right? So this is not just on 10 acres or more. This is on, you know, a eighth acre lot in a, in a subdivision. So, so don't tell on us. Like you just say, Hey, how much do you make and sign here and we'll close tomorrow. Well, we some, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I wish it was, we, we have to know order appraisal on stuff, but they are working on an automated appraisal. If they ever get that done, it'd be very nice. But uh, yeah, it's very simple, right? We have a, I mean, it's a written application. Maybe they're considering that, you know, enough documentation on on these loans, but it's kind of surprising. Yeah. But so that's what we're doing most of. Most of our loans right now are lot loans or small acreage loans. And then um, and then we're mixing in some construction loans as well. Cause yeah, I mean, I the, the, no, the no doc thing is for these little lots is, is huge. And I mean, I get it from y'all's perspective. You're getting 25% down. You know, you're and it's just dirt, you know, so your uh your exposure is really low. You know, you're you're not if you have to foreclose on it, you're sitting in a good position. Yeah, and it's generally only fifteen percent down. Remember, so most of most of our loans are fifteen down. So I don't know. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. You said fifteen or twenty five. Where's that based on just how many years? How many years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you can put down as much as you want. Um it's just your maximum years um, is going to be tied to your, your, your percent down. Okay. Right. So, you know, at 25% down, you could do a 10 year loan if you wanted to, but you could also go out to 25 years. So, but most people do 15 for 15, you know, it depends on the lot size. We get some expensive, more expensive land. They start stretching it out, but I wanna, um, what there's no the, prepayment penalties. Um, so what is the, well, like me? I mean, you, you said no docs, but I mean, what is it like their main, what is the main requirement to actually be able to, approve these loans so 720 uh, credit score you know we want the debt to income ratio to be around 40 um yeah mm -hmm. okay so you're still checking all that i got you we still check credit um we have a little pdf application form they fill out and um and then they actually do fill out the full application on we still pull credit and, uh, but we don't we don't pull any any transcripts or, or anything like that from them. So really great for self-employed borrowers, right? That well, and that's, pretty... that's what we get a lot of with the owner finance side is, you know, these guys don't have 720 credit scores. Some of them, their debt to income is right. 40, 45. Um, but yeah, their, their credit score is not that. Uh, and, but y'all do Barndo loans, right? Like y'all are, y'all are cool with Barndo. I know for a while there, a lot of lenders were, Kind of like, you know, in the beginning stages where like, I really don't like the barn doors, the metal buildings. Yeah, yeah, we do. We uh, we love barn doors. We, you know, I'd say the most, most of the barn doors we do aren't really barn doors, right? They're more metal homes. But uh, yeah, we, as long as the living quarters are 50% of the space, we'll call it a home, right? And do that 30 year fix, 15% down construction loan, exactly the same as if you're doing a stick built house. If you get to where the living quarters are less than 50% of the space of the barn, then we're looking more of a barn loan, right? So we can still do 15%, but it'd be like a lot loan. It'd be like on a 15 year, 15 year term. So, you know, some people want to put that just one room apartment in there in a barn. That's more of a barn loan than a, than a, than a home loan. Um, so yeah, if they're doing 50% or more, it's a fantastic loan, right? Cause that's 15% down one time close 30 year fixed. You can still, lower the rate every 12 months, rolling any improvements you want to. So 
we do have a lot of people do that too. When they buy that land, they'll they'll throw in a barn dough uh, to live in while they build. Yeah. Um, it's kind of funny the barn dough is what they're called around the country, right? Not everyone calls them barn doughs. Um, I think in Ohio they call them shouses, which is very shouse. <laughs> you know, shop homes. Um, oh, okay. yeah, shouse. So when they first said it a few times, I was like, "What are y'all talking about?" A shout <laughs> sounds like a little rodent or something, you know? Yeah, or, like like a like a like a lice is what it kind of a louse, a shrew, a shrew and a louse mixed together. So. <laughs> But, um, but yeah, it's a great loan. We do, I mean, we do some giant ones and we do some small ones, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of fancy barn does out there for sure. Oh man. Yeah. I've seen some insane ones and they're actually, yeah. you know, they used to be cheaper to build than a house. You know, and now it's kind of switched back over where it's more expensive to build them than it is a house with all the, since COVID hit, um, you know, it's almost doubled because like, I, I do, I built some warehouses Sheesh. and stuff like that and. You know, I used to be able to get them at like fourteen dollars a square foot for the metal, for you know, for the framing and all that, the red iron, and it's twenty five, twenty eight dollars now. It then it almost doesn't even make sense. I mean, yeah, we just built a barn and we a uh, metal barn, and we're realizing that <laughs> it's uh, it's in, putting a little room in it, and it's just it's it's an adventure for sure. But yeah, it's very expensive. But uh, but but yeah, we do all that. I mean, we roll in. You know, we could roll in a riding arena. If they want an arena, we can do, I mean, we can do, there's almost no limit to what we do. I mean, we could roll in a, if they want a vegetable garden, right? We could roll in a, the building of a custom <laughs> garden. I mean, it's, it's that, it's that wild. You know, that's, that's one thing I think is so important on these country properties, man, because these people, it's hard to, you know, when you're buying a property like that, it's hard to visualize what the property could be, you know? And, um, you know, if we can present them that this could be your dream property, you know, we could paint a house if we wanted to in the, in the, in the loan. Right. So just to have them be able to maybe help them because people can't visualize anything. I mean, you know what I mean? It, very few people can visualize what the end product's going to look like. Um, but if we can, you know, help them do that and this property might be your dream property, just needs to add a few things or even take away a few things, you know, then and maybe we can, you know, move land a little better because it's, it's tough to tough to do that. Um. All right. So lot loans, ten acre loans, home loans, improvement loans. That's, that's all pretty powerful stuff. Um, you know, coming from a person that sells a lot of land, uh, you know, I get that question all the time. And I'm actually excited about it. Um, I'm hoping to to utilize y'all a lot. I'm hoping that we get some phone calls on the Seguin tracks. But I, I know it's good that going forward, you know, when someone asks, well, you know, who do you know that can that can do this? Uh, you know, I got someone. And I think as, a, as an agent, it's good for for everyone to separate themselves. You know, I mean, I imagine marketing, hey, no doc loan on this Hey, I got a lot for sale. No doc loan. Improvements can be... That would be, be amazing. Yeah. Im improvements included. I mean, like your your marketing, you know, would be very powerful. You know, you want to finance a tank. You know, we can finance this. We can finance that. So, yeah, it's going to be huge for our agents. Um, just getting the word out. To and everyone. we're actually... We're actually working on really trying to amp up that, you know, getting that out there, right? Or, or you know, at least being able to present it to someone who has some lots for sale, right? It's like, how do you, what, how do, how do we make people know? Like, is it a flyer? Do we, you know, something else in the borrowers that we can help help make that, you know, lets them know that you can buy the lot like this, you can buy the the lot like this, right? There's there's a couple options. You can buy the before or the after, you know, in the same transaction, same rate, same terms. You know, your loan's gonna be a little bit bigger because you're financing the stuff in, but you know, I, I, I don't see that out there. I see people offer, you know, rehab on houses, but, you know, they don't, you don't do it on lots, but that's basically what this is. And so we're actually have a, have a meeting at noon today to talk about that and maybe how that marketing would look and try to get, you know, some people that stuff. Cause we do some, some neighborhoods, you know, around Kerrville and stuff like that. We're like the preferred lender in that. And that's what I'm like, man, if these people know going in, cause the hard part is someone goes and gets a lot under contract and it's like, okay, now I want to add all this stuff. It's like, well, now you have to get all your bids 
you know, you have to get all this stuff before closing or before it goes to underwriting and we order the appraisal and it, it can slow stuff up. But if you know that going in, we can, you know, plan ahead and not have that closing delayed because we're trying to get bids from, you know, well companies or septic companies or whatever it might be, right? Because they can take some time on those things sometimes. Oh yeah, well but, over uh, there right now. Man, they are, I think a three three month delay from what I heard um, yesterday. Expensive. Yeah. Like and, our, and my team, so I have a team, we have a loan officer in Seguin. Um, really? That's myself. Wild. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah. and she, uh, she's great. She's awesome. She's actually our top producer. And then we have another loan officer here in, in, in Brenham with me. And um, we have our own loan coordinator. So we have a really good, uh, really good team. You know, I was just looking at numbers and us along with the other team, there's two teams have closed over 700 lots in the last, uh, last two years on this loan. Wow. So it's, we do a lot of them. And, um, and most of those recently, right. We're really, we're really getting them fired up. So, Well, I think, you know, just, uh, getting in front of people, we have a mixer every month, um, you know, getting in there and getting out some flyers, you know, any sort of marketing material that you can get, get to me, I can get to the agents on our private groups. Um, uh, obviously we'll post this to the, to the groups and, um, you know, they, they can watch it later. Um, but yeah, just, you know, getting whatever you can, uh, marketing material wise that I can get in front of the agents. Cause I think it's powerful. I think a lot of people are sleeping on it. You know, it doesn't sound sexy, you know, when I do a post about, oh, we can do land loans. But, you know, when you, when you have the conversation, like we just have, and you realize the potential there it's huge huge yeah i think it'd be i think you could do some really cool marketing with it right just show that land and then show it being improved right somehow there's some, there's there's ways to do it that would be really great and we um we love mixers too man y'all ever y'all ever want to do something let us know we're always up for that and we have you know pretty, what you know we have uh and i don't know what y'all do on sponsorships but we have a thing called the white line uh, it's called a white line summit it's in November. We're probably going to have a couple hundred people there. Mostly, I mean, they're all going to be in the real estate world, um, whether they're agents or investors or whatever. Um, if y'all wanted to get in on that and be a like a sponsor and have a table, you get to go up and talk for a little bit. You get to hand out any sort of marketing materials. You'll basically be locked in with everyone that's there. Um, it's really inexpensive. It's only five hundred dollars, and to get into that in front of that many people. I mean, I've paid way more to get in front of less people for my real estate brokerage. Uh, let me know if that's something that y'all are interested in. I'd love to have y'all there as the the land, you know, the land lender. Yeah, I think you can go ahead and, and pencil us in. I I was looking at the dates, and we're actually my whole team is going to a meeting in Tennessee on the first through the third. Oh, and I think this is right around there, isn't it? And it's November at the third. same dates. <laughs> November third, yeah. But our San Antonio office is, gonna, is in town, right? So I'm sure we can yeah. get there. They're the farm and ranch side, but they're very familiar with our side too and can kind of go in there and, and at least be present, right? Which for, that's that's cheap. You are right. That's very cheap to get in front of a focus group like that of that many people. Um, and it might be so more. I'll, I'll, the stadium, not stadium, the, the conference area seats 300 people. We've got 100 agents that can bring up to three people. Um, so, I mean, we're hoping, my goal is to have, you know, close to 200 people in there and it's over by Ikea at the Randolph Brooks area. And it's this swank. I mean, it's insane. Like this, it's going to be awesome. Uh, yeah, very cool. So, hey, uh, so yeah. Here's, uh, uh, Jeff's uh, information or can you, can we put it on the, on the chat or I don't know where. I think when I, I think on the post, hang on, let me pull it on the post that you put it. I think his number was on there. Let me pull it up real quick. And we do, uh, we do. I mean, if anyone has a has listings or wants like a, we have basically a general general um, flyer for for lot the lot loan, and Perfect. I can customize it for anyone. A lot of people I put like their a picture of their lot and their information on this flyer, and it's got it breaks down our whole lot loan, which is super. I mean, it's a, and then has all three of our contact information on it because we're a true team, right? If if we call any three of us, it, it's the same. Um, and yeah, so it's really it's really great. Right. Yeah, yeah. So we can we can get it and put your number on there too, and um, and you can pass that out. But it's a uh, it's it's really great and easy to easy to customize. So don't we're not you're not asking too much of us at all. Ask us anything you need. We're, that's why we're here, right? But um, 
but yeah, so that's if you don't have my information, I'm sure we can get it to you pretty quick. Yeah, I'm putting in the chat right now. And yep. I will I'm gonna add it to this. I'm also gonna add it to that that page I did. Nine seven nine. Three three seven four five three seven. All right, so it's on Israel. It's on this, but I also added it to the. Um, Appreciate uh, it. Yeah, I'm gonna put them on my phone already because. Yeah, no, I got I, ten acres as well, and I get those calls all the time. And on our, um, you know, speaking on the farm and ranch side, you know, they do a lot of you know land and transition. Um, you know, larger acreage that people buy, you know, they do have, and they do partial releases as well. You know, the, the purpose of a farm credit isn't really investment, but you know, every land purchase is investment, right? So it's really on their side, it's, it's a lot easier for them to do that larger land, you know, partial release parts, part of it. When you sell that, you can pay down the loan and, 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 you know, when you get to generally on those, you, the, you're going to make your income at the end, right? Cause you'd be paying down your loan on the first few, few uh, partial releases, but that is something they can do as well, um, you know, on those larger land purchases. Um, Does the, the do these uh, count also for like commercial zoning kind of land, or or is that totally different? So it's 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 different, right? They um, the land, yeah, the land in transition, or when you get too close to to big towns, right? Um, it it gets a little more strict on down payment and stuff like that because it's really not the the mission of farm credit, right? Farm credit's a really old organization, you know, 115 years old now. And um, the mission is really agricultural. Now, if someone's buying an agricultural operation, you know, we can finance all kinds of crazy stuff, right? We can buy them helicopters and airplanes, and, and but uh, as long as it's used in their agricultural operations. So it's really, it's really wild, um, really different. It's, it's just a different mindset, more based off of, you know, agriculture, ag um, agricultural, uh, you know, income. Where on my side, it's a consumer purpose. Now, we, we still do classify people as non-farmers, part-time farmers, or full-time farmers. So if you're buying 10 acres, we're going to call you a part-time farmer because you have the potential to earn $500 a year in ag, right? Mm -hmm. And so because you're a part-time farmer, it opens up our construction loans and stuff like that, and we can lend more money. Now, where a non-farmer is going to be a little bit limited on their land value values not even loan amounts but values and um, and home values as well so the land value is like 387 i think uh, for a non-farmer right so that would be less than five acres and then the um the home value is 581 for a non-farmer so 4.9 acres your house can't be worth more not construction cost it can't be worth more than 581 5.1 acres you know we can go up to you know a couple million well that small would be tough, but as a part-time farmer, we really don't have a have a limit. We have to justify it, but we don't have a limit. Hmm. Gotcha. And all rural. It has to be rural, right? So we're uh, outside of city limits or in a in a city limit or in this town less than twenty five hundred. So we don't do in town lots or or homes. We have the ability to do conventional loans, but we really don't, just because we you know, conventional FHA, VA, stuff like that. We just, we just specialize in this. So we work with a lot of mortgage companies. So we love mortgage companies as well. So we're not trying to, you know, step on any toes. If, if y'all got, or you are in the mortgage business or have mortgage friends, they're, they're some of our best lead sources too. So um, we, um, we just kind of specialize in this. I like it. It's, it's, uh, it's going to be fun for, I'm hoping that I get some stuff off it in Seguin. And then, especially when I start doing, I'm going to try to build some of these spec homes on some of these tracks, you know, get y'all out there. Uh, I can see a lot of ways to to market it. So I'm excited. And man, I, I appreciate you reaching out. Um, we're, we're getting close to the 10 o'clock mark. Um, I don't have, I mean, I got a ton of ideas on on ways to utilize it. I think Jeff, anytime you can get any sort of marketing materials in my hands, I'll share it with the, uh, with the agents. Um, I'm sure I'll have more questions once this video goes live to our pages and people start watching it. So um, I'll probably circle back or get you connected with people as well. 
Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, when I get um, after this meeting, I'm going to try to come up with some stuff, and I'm, I may shoot it over to you just to bounce it off to you, as you as well. So as someone who deals with a lot of smaller tracks and stuff like that, you might have some some good input before we go too crazy on the um, on making marketing stuff. It'd be nice to have some feedback from people out there in the in the field. Yeah, no, let me know. I'm I'm always about you know going back and forth. Um, Um, uh, yeah, just the, the, the no dock and the adding the tank because I mean, fencing and tanks and entrances and all that stuff. Most banks do, they don't want to do any of that. So people have to come out of their pocket and that stuff gets expensive. It gets real expensive. I mean, I'm in flex when we did a bocce ball court on one, right? Which oh, I, I didn't even know what it was at the time, but, uh, I mean, we could roll in trees, right? If they want to plant trees. We could actually roll in them buying and planting trees. It's that, it's that wild, man. It's, a uh, I think it could really be marketed that that way to maybe set, you know, some lots apart from, you know, lots down the road that are just being sold as a cow field. You know what I'm saying? A cow pasture. So, but yeah, my, that was my cell phone. Um, all the numbers on these flyers, I'll send you all our cell phones. We don't, uh, we don't put a 1-800 number on there. You know, we're, uh, we're commission based. So we're, we want to take care of people and get referrals, right? That's the only way we get business. We don't, we don't buy leads or, or put up billboards like some of our competitors do, but, uh, we're all about the service, so don't hesitate to call or email, obviously.